Next question, the member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Speaker, in March, this government announced their COVID-19 action plan, which was largely comprised of tax deferrals for businesses instead of the real help that they needed, like commercial rent relief. Just a few weeks ago, the Treasury Board President told us that he is planning to collect an astonishing 100% of those tax deferrals, despite being businesses being closed with no cash flow, and we are now in a second wave shutdown to slow the spread of COVID-19. It is clear that the March action plan failed. It is clear that there was no plan for the second wave. The Premier was taking a summer victory tour while Ontarians were waiting for back-to-school plans and lining up Order. for hours to get a COVID test. Speaker, will the Premier's Jim. budget include a real second wave plan? Not just deferred supports. Will the Premier make investments commensurate with the health crisis that we now face? And how will... Thank you. Thank you. The parliamentary assistant to reply. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And to the member opposite, uh, what the Premier was doing was touring this province, engaging with the small businesses throughout this province, Mr. Speaker. These are mom and pop shops. And, and behind every single one of those closed doors, Mr. Speaker, is a family trying to provide for their loved ones during a very difficult time. And I reject the member's statement that there has been no direct uh, response. There has been to the tune of $11 billion, Mr. Speaker. That's been tax cuts, employer health tax cuts, to the tune of $300 million, $175 million to keep hydro rates low, $300 million just announced for the regions that are affected by the revised stage two, Mr. Speaker. And that's going to go help with their fixed costs, whether that's hydro, whether that's those taxes that we spoke about, Mr. Speaker, or even with property taxes. And so while the member opposite considers that consulting with those hard-working businesses Ontario is a waste of time, we disagree here on the government. And the supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, you know, as the PA lists these figures and they claim that you're, you're committing for support, the FAO points out that this government is sitting on $9.3 billion in reserves and unallocated funds, which could be invested in programs and supports for Ontarians to keep them safe. In fact, you've fallen short on long-term care, Order. on education, on small business, and in, in fact, when Order. you look at cutting off the emergency benefits that the most vulnerable Ontarians rely on in OW and ODSP income supports. Speaker, since March, as the PA knows, the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs held hundreds of hours of hearings across industries, sectors, um, hearing testimonies and witnesses from restaurants to spas to tourism operators, Question. tech hubs. In fact, we have this book of ideas that have been presented. Why are we still waiting for supports, for the much needed supports that have been called for? What are you waiting Order. for? Order. Parliamentary assistant to reply. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, certainly a lot to digest in that question, but I want to share with that member a lesson that my parents taught me when I was nine years old in, in our little convenience store in Rexdale, and that is when times are good, you put away for a rainy day, Mr. Speaker. And that's what this government did in its first two years of its mandate. And that's why we're able to provide that direct relief, Mr. Speaker. The member opposite mentions the FAO report, and I want to remind the member that the FAO's first quarter report is a snapshot in time, and it would be irresponsible of a prudent government to spend its entire year's budget in that very short period of time. So we are providing that uh, direct uh, support, Mr. Speaker, and that's why we announced $300 million for the revised Stage 2. Those supports are going to continue in a coordinated effort with our federal partners in Ottawa, Mr. Speaker, to fill the gaps of this joint program that is released, and that's why we will have those further support measures announced in that budget, and I look forward to continue to assist the great, hard-working business of this province through the budget. 